Hey there you guys, today we're going to be talking about decorating your Airbnb, kind of the do's and don'ts, and we will get to that right after this. Hey there you guys, this is Real Estate Divas and thank you for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about decorating your Airbnb. Sometimes it seems super easy, um, you know, we all watch HGTV, um, but it's not. There's, there's stuff you got to consider. Um, Number one question I get. What? Decorating. How do I decorate? How do I do this? Yeah. I literally had to put some thought into what do I, what are my steps when I go through decorating? What's my process? Because it's always the same. And I get high praise for my Airbnb designs, but I don't know what I'm doing. Well, I'm going to be the first to admit it. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, but there's a difference. So basically, <laughs> you know, I mean, one, stay, uh, staying at a lot of Airbnbs, when, I think kind of like what we were talking about earlier, whenever you're doing research, about Airbnbs and you're looking at the price point and where you're going to buy, you want to know what that competition looks like and you want to stand out, right? Different from them. You're not going to do some hodgepodge something something. Um, My number one advice if you're looking, you're going to start setting up your Airbnb is go in and click on any photo and it doesn't matter where it is. Yep. What do you like about it? What makes you go, all right, I'm going to go take a vacation. And stay there. To Tampa. Yeah. And I'm going to look at 10 Airbnbs. What do I like about this one? Yep. And that was what clicked for me. Um, and it was a vacation to, I don't know, somewhere in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like St. Martin. And I was like, I had literally probably 20 to choose from. But what made me like this one? Yep. And you have to ask yourself that because it, it might be subconscious of going, okay, I need to have this property. Why? What spoke to you? Exactly. Well, and I think making a list, kind of like, uh, you know, you and I have talked about it before. You, When you make a list of, all right, these are the things that I like about it. These are the things I don't like about it. You, you can do that clicking. You don't have to go to St. Martin and figure that out. You can do that by clicking. Well, and a lot of design is, you know, is it a picture? Yeah. You, is it is your entire is your entire place done around one piece of art, and you could have that one piece of art in the main room, and, and it brings and bring everything everything around together. It. I have, I have one condo, that I decided you know the hospitality symbol of hospitality and welcome is the pineapple, so I had all art tie into pineapples. And I had just all of this big pineapple art everywhere. And it was in the bedroom, in the bathroom, in the living room, in the kitchen. And if you just kind of pick, sometimes, you know, we've talked about a theme, it, it works. Well, and I think that's one of the things that, um, that I, I've talked to you about it and some other people about when it, when it comes to Airbnb, I know whenever I'm booking one and I'm clicking through and I'm looking for something, I want something that I don't have at home. I want something that maybe inspires me or, you know, relaxes. One of the, it's either one of the two. It's usually the inspire. I want to see it because, you know, it's a little bit different. But every time I go to a place, I take some inspiration from it. And it may not be, it may be too much for me to do at home, but oh my gosh, I love this combo. Right. I am going to implement that somewhere. You right. know, if it's not in my home, it's going to be in a flip, it's going to be in something else, but it's going to be, I'm going to implement it somewhere. And you, you can. I mean, when you're doing your remodel, like mm -hmm. let's say you buy a property and then you're going to remodel it and you know you're going to use it as an Airbnb and I've done that, which means you can splurge a little more on some of your finishes. Absolutely. And you can go a little crazier. So where I like to take my inspiration for, for bathrooms, restaurant bathrooms. Oh yeah, because they will, they'll, they'll make them just really unique. Something you're like, wow, I did not expect that. But it makes an impression. It does. It, it, and it's fun because, you know, people are staying near Airbnbs are staying for a couple nights, maybe a week. Mm -hmm. They're not going to stay a long term. So if you have something that just is kind of different, but completely classy, elegant, and... Absolutely. 
They love it. Yep. But that's the first question I always, you know, what do you love? And I mean, now, yeah, I've done enough of these where I know my style. Mm -hmm. But if you're just starting out, you need to say, all right, I need to go through and look at Airbnb properties and which one catches my eye and why. Yeah, why do I gravitate to that? And it's going to be something with the decor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or, or the amenities, which you can always add unless it's a pool or something like that. Right. Um, so there's also, because I think a lot of Airbnbs, the, the really successful ones, mm -hmm. tend to be themed well, to or, a certain extent. Yes, themed, yeah. definitely themed, or they seem to cater to a certain type of traveler. Exactly. Such as a business traveler. Which, if we're talking business traveler, then things are probably going to be a little bit more conservative. So you're going to do a little bit more middle of the road, not as, you know, woohoo, crazy, crazy. Right. Yeah. And then if you've got a if you've got a house that's all about the amenities, so it has maybe a pool, it's got a game table. Um, the current house that I'm working on has a pool table room, has the pool area. Then has a fire pit area, gas fire pit area. Mm -hmm. Then also has a putting green. It's got all sorts of cool features to it. Well, obviously, I want to take my decor up a notch. Up a notch. So yeah. it's like fun. Yeah. You know. So I've so all now it's a fun house. So we need something that's going to be fun throughout. Yeah. Now yeah. A, a single businessman is not going to be renting this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, family reunions, weddings, anything like that. It also kind of, in my opinion, depends on where you're at. So if um, I am doing a cabin in the woods, then my decor is going to be way different than the condo in the city. So those things... And we see that. Yeah. You see that. I mean, because I know you're... You're a licensed broker in Colorado. Absolutely. And so if you're up in the mountains in Colorado, everything's got that like log cabin feel to it. And you might have log cabin, you know, big logs yeah, on rustic furniture. Rustic or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to do something rustic or you're going to do Native American or you're going to do something where you get to feel the experience. You feel like you're, uh, you're immersed. Well, here in Dallas, well... Many of us feel that everybody wears cowboy hats yep. around. We're actually pretty cosmopolitan. Dallas is way more than, than, than Fort, Fort Worth. Worth. Well, Fort Worth is way more lax. Right. Yeah. And so Fort Worth, you're going to see guys with cowboy hats. Yep. Dallas, you're not. It's very, very cosmopolitan. And so you're more likely to see those sleek, modern lines. Yeah. Finishes out, you know. A little, it's definitely a more uh, high-end city type of thing. Okay, so we've, we've, you know, yes, that's the first thing. Is your property for fun where you're going to take a little more risk or is your property for a business traveler where you're going to be a little more conservative? Is it somewhere in the middle? Yep. But pick it ahead of time. Don't just go out and start shopping willy-nilly. You know, I think that's the weirdest thing is when somebody just starts, I like this, I like this, and they get, get it home and none of it, like, Individual pieces, okay, but none of it is cohesive. And so you can't yeah. just go out there without a plan. My my biggest argument right now with two new clients, and, and the first one is learned. Second one, not yet. But the first one is learned. And I just looked at him yesterday and I'm like, what is that? He goes, this is some things I had left over in my garage. Ah. And I and, and I and I go, mm -hmm. and, and he goes, I go, those don't work here. And he goes, say no more. And he pulled uh -huh. them out. The other person, the other client has still yet to understand that we don't take all the stuff that you don't want from your house. And put it in that house. And put it in that house. Unless we're doing more of a budget. <laughs> or unless, you know, you have amazing stuff in your garage, which I don't see very often. I don't see a lot of garage if you furniture. If you in your house, <laughs> why are you going to love it in this house? Yep. And again... It's not 100% of the time. Sometimes you can find some quirky item, you know, and it works, and you throw it in there. Um, you know, I've got, I've got stuff that, you know, occasionally I'll go, oh, all right, well, that'll work in this property, you know, and I'll bring it over. But nine times out of ten, no, I'm, I'm reshopping and finding new things 
to go unless you know unless I have some item left over that didn't go in the last property and I'm like God I really like this thing. But Let me make that a being room said, this. that being said, when we're talking furniture, so uh, and again, um, the furniture you need to keep it in your mind that this furniture is going to get a lot of wear and tear and you're probably going to have to replace it. I, you know, and people and so don't, don't people, dump a ton of money. And I would say majority, seven out of 10 guests will treat your stuff better than what they would treat their own. But the other three, but and I'm not even talking about it. I'm not even talking about people coming into the Airbnb and destroying it. I'm talking about just the fact that it's getting used all the time, all the time. Right. You know, I mean, I know I've got furniture in my house that maybe gets sat in once. How about beds? A couple of weeks. How about how about beds? You know, there yeah, are or people, beds. Yeah, beds that be don't get sleep in, slept in for months at a time. Well, your girls are off at college. Yep. And. You know, it's not like you're living in a one-bedroom apartment. You're not. And so how often are those other yeah. beds now getting slept in when your girls come home? Yeah. But Exactly. I mean, so the the point is, is that these are going to be uh, the rentals. Remember that, you know, because uh, we all know people get heavily emotionally invested in these sort of things. So don't put anything you love in there because really when it comes to furniture, Expensive you're going to have to replace it. Right. Now, that being said, also don't make it look like a garage sale. Don't exactly. buy something just because it fits the price. Buy something because it fits the space and the color that you're going for. Um, yeah. And what I find is if your basic pieces are neutral, neutral colors, easy to work with. And you can get crazy with the accents. All of it is accents. And then it makes it very easy and cost effective if those accents get ruined or if it gets or, tired. Yeah, or, or now a new trend has come and I can trade out the accents. Right. Or the accents are fine, but now I got to replace the chair. Well, that's easy. I'm just going to go get another gray chair. Gray chair. Yeah. Absolutely. So, again, yes, do not buy expensive furniture. I am a regular shopper on Facebook Marketplace. I've found a ton of I stuff on it. I love it. Yes. And I have found some great bargains, some stuff that, oh my gosh, I could never afford. Even stuff that was still available mm -hmm. for purchase that I could never afford. And I got it at a great deal that I could afford to put in an Airbnb and not worry if it got too destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to be distraught because you didn't spend right. $10,000 on that couch. You know, you spent 1000 <laughs> Right. Right. So do not buy expensive furniture. Go in, decide in your space, measure your space. Go, all right, I need this size of couch and a couple armchairs. And at a lot of times, accent chairs are the last things I buy. Well, yeah, I, that makes total sense to me because one, accent chairs, you can buy them in a multitude of colors, fabrics, and design. And it From adds, a multitude of places. Yeah, and it adds that little pop, you know, of style or flair or whatever, but you can make it work with the bigger pieces. Right, right. That totally it, makes sense. So the first thing I do when I walk in, I go, all right, this is the living room. Am I having a pullout sofa? because not all Airbnb hosts want them. Some Airbnb hosts want to put like three pull-out sofas in a large living area, <laughs> which I am completely against. We're not talking about you. that. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, when I'm designing, am I against one pull-out sofa in the living room? No, I think it's a good sound plan for an Airbnb. That way, you know, maybe it's kids who sleep out there. Or yeah. You know, the, the couple. The option the, is there, right. is all it is. You're not, in my opinion, I'm with you. You know, there are certain Airbnbs out there that they do. A mu how many people can we stuff in this house as possible? And I get that. But for me, it would be, I just like options, you know, because the kids don't always want to stay in the beds. Or maybe they're young kids and all the, all the parents get the beds and there's young kids in the front. I don't want to hear them anyway. Right. You know, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, but I think it's a great plan. Also, you know, majority of homes are about three bedrooms, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, if you're traveling with 
several couples. There's always that fourth couple that nobody really likes, and so you really <laughs> the signs room. up late, you know, for the group trip. You know, like, they get the couch. They definitely yeah. get to pay full price. Yeah, the other bedroom people, but you guys get the pull-out sofa. Yeah, sorry, you came late. Well, um, I think it's really important for, you know, the two, two biggest tips so far is really you want to decide what your style is um, and make a game plan. And part of that game plan is what you just mentioned, which is measuring and... Measure your space. Measure your space. But where do you want that plan? Where do you want that couch? How big do you want it to be? Is it going to be a pullout? So then I know what the rest of the room needs to look like and you're making that list. So tip of the day. Yes. Tip of the day. Tip, tip of, of the, the day. day. Wait. Oh. No. Go to Ikea.com. Yes. They will have room plan outs because Ikea is really great. While I don't put any furniture from Ikea, I don't. Maybe the occasional end table if I buy it on Facebook Marketplace. But furniture isn't something, because I'm doing higher end properties, I don't want to do that. If you're doing an economy budget property, knock yourself out, do Ikea. Um, I have Ikea in my actual, my own personal house and some bedrooms. It's not a big but deal. But Ikea is great, is great about spacing those but what floor they plans. what do have is they have spatial recognition software. Mm -hmm. So you can go, all right, my room is, 10 feet by 12 feet and here's where my TV is and, and here's, here's the doors and this is what I need can I put couches here yep and what size can those couches be that's fantastic that is a tip of the day <laughs> I did not know about that part of the so website I also I also plan my kitchens out that way yeah and then I take it to a kitchen place and I buy cabinets somewhere else but just just so you know you can also use their kitchen design software which is totally awesome um, so, yeah, we're not buying expensive furniture, Facebook Marketplace, Ikea. There are discount. If you go to the rental furniture places, they all have for sale rooms mm -hmm. that have discount furniture in them. Look at that furniture. If it looks tired and sad to you, it looks tired and sad to lots of people. Well, yes. But, I mean, you, you can get deals there. You can get deals um, at a lot of the large, big box furniture, you know, companies because right. they've got their sale rooms. Um, and then there's also sample sales for actual manufacturers. They right. do sample sales. In Dallas, we've got a whole so, gallery district for that. So just make sure there's no big stains on it. Because mm -hmm. if it's a really ugly gray couch, and, it, and I've seen some, you know, it's gray. It's got some pattern in it. You know what I'm talking about. It is just, it's an ugly couch. Throw some very bright colored throw pillows on it. Mm -hmm. Maybe something that has a little slogan that says, you know, travel is, you know, the way to be or something. Yeah. Something dumb like something that. Something inspirational. Something inspirational. You know, once you do that to this couch, you can, you can. Does it elevate it? Does yeah. it elevate it? Does it draw it in? You know, and then you throw some stuff on some shelves that kind of bring in the, Colors. the pillows. And it's amazing how people don't focus on how ugly that couch is, but what they see is that pop of color. Mm -hmm. And they go, oh, wow, look at that thing on the shelf. Or, whoa, I love that pillow. But they don't notice that ugly, ugly couch. Well, we are saying don't get ugly, so... <laughs> try, not, try not to buy but, ugly. You know, I mean, if you got to compensate yeah, for yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you can elevate something really quickly. You really can. And if it's neutral, yeah, yeah. you can get away with it. Um, and again, the most important thing is buy furniture to the room size. Don't buy it because it's the right price, buy it because it fits the space. Well, and I thought another great tip that you had is as far as the bedrooms the bedrooms and all the bedding is keep the same size bed as much as possible yes that is that's an awesome tip it yes and it's what you learn once you have more than one of these because when you have large houses are extremely difficult to turn over and your laundry so think about your own house if you only have white sheets and you've got some beds that are queen and some beds that are king, how ticked off are you 
that you grabbed that queen set of sheets and tried to get it on the king size and then realized what it was yep. and you're like, Ugh. then you went back to your linen closet, grabbed another set that you thought was king, but it's queen and, and so on and so forth. Try magnetizing that yep. by Multiple five properties. bedrooms yeah. times, you know, 20 properties. Did you say magnetizing? Magnetize it. <laughs> yeah, not magnetize. She meant multiply. Yeah, multiply. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to call her out. Yeah. <laughs> magnetize, being... magnetize, multiply. Yeah, we all get it, what they're I'm all, trying to say. They're all M words. Uh, yeah, M word. Yeah, I was just like the um, M word. <laughs> magnetize. Magnetize. Well, yeah. you know, you're you're making the problem seem bigger than what it really was. You mean magnify? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, moving on, moving on, moving Fine. on. <laughs> Got to. Um, so basically, but the whole the the whole thing is is try to make your your process yeah. as simple as possible. So let's be fair. I love king beds. I will probably only put king beds in a property when I can help it. If I have a, a house that's a five bedroom and I've got three bedrooms that are smaller and they won't fit a king bed, mm -hmm. well, then guess what? I'm putting queen beds in all of my properties because it's all one type of sheet. Yep. I buy beige colored sheets for my queen beds, dark gray colored sheets for my king beds. And that's just how it works and my, my cleaning staff knows it. I know they love it because yeah. they don't, they don't have, have to, to think about it. Right. Yeah. It used to be that I insisted on white sheets and I just found that that was, even if it had, so there's certain companies in the United States that you can order sheets from and you kind of flip over the stitching and it's either, it's dark green stitching or it's yellow stitching or mm -hmm. it's red stitching. And Depending on the size on of the sheet. The, and so hospitality can just grab those really quickly and go. Yep. That's what they have at hotels. Yep. With this, you know, when you're dealing with Airbnbs and it's not this, you know, it's not a thousand room. Yeah, and you hotel. don't have your the, your own laundry room that everything's getting moved down to and somebody's in charge of all of that. Yeah. But no, that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. But yeah, keeping all your beds the same size. So in your big houses, and you know, and I do have big houses that have some king beds. Um, I most of them will have two king beds and the rest queen beds. Yeah. But having the two at least different sh color sheets, then they can easily grab those because they know, okay, well these three bedrooms are queen, and we only have beige and dark gray, so we know yeah. which. Yeah. Makes it super go. simple. Well, and then the other thing you had mentioned was um, make sure that there are nightstands on both sides. Right. If you yep. are if you are sleeping this many heads, I mean, it's unlikely. Well, it's not unlikely, but you are sleeping to get this many people in in a property, which means there are going to be people sharing beds. There might be uh, lots of people. You know, there might be friends sharing beds. You don't know. Having I get it. If you're a single person, you might just have one nightstand. And if you occasionally have a person sleep over, okay, well, they get to put their crap on the floor. The thing is, is it's so <laughs> easy these days, even if you don't have room, if we're dealing with a, with a apartment or a condo or some, a property where your space is limited, then maybe you just have a nightstand on one side, but you have a shelf or something on the other side. Um, it's just, uh, I mean, it's hospitality. I also have chargers Yep. on each side. So it's, it's an extension cord, mm -hmm. basically, right, that plugs into the wall. And it will have an outlet for your laptop, but then it will have charging, like you, uh, the USB, USB mm -hmm. charging ports in it. Yep. That is usually the number one thing that I get commented on going, there were charging ports on every single bed because the cost of that is, is like minimal. It's five bucks. Yeah, it's not that expensive. And I can run it And it's it up, worth it. And I just have it kind of hanging, like I'll have the bedside lamp and then I'll have it zip tied is mm -hmm. this little charging station and so they can just plug in and, and uh Well, and not charge. everybody ch carries around a charging cord like I do that's about 10 feet long <laughs> in case I get to a room that I'm that like, where can't... can I plug it in? Right. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, most people want it right next to their bed. Absolutely. Re re regardless. Absolutely. 
And having a nightstand on each side of the bed is important. It is. Well, so besides the nightstand on each side, um, you don't really like uh, dressers in every? No, I don't have dressers in every room. One, uh, most, most rooms can't accommodate that. Mm -hmm. What I do have now, going forward, I have one of those um, fold-out luggage racks for people's suitcases. That works. It does. It's very seldom that I actually move into the dressers anyway. Right. Um, so, I mean, to me, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, my husband does. Yeah. He, like, loves that. Like, he, like, gets to a hotel and he, like, moves all his stuff into the dresser. I know some people do that. I am, I am just live out of my suitcase. It depends on care. how long I'm there. I'm, but if I, I'm there for a couple of, of days, then I'm not putting anything in a dresser. No. So... The, as far as adding the beds, like we were talking about some of some of these places, you know, Airbnbs have multiple beds, you know, um, in one room. It's the kid room or it's this, the, the bunk, bunk room. room. That? You've got to check code. So I only have Airbnbs in the city of Dallas. I know what Dallas code is. Three heartbeats per room. Technically, I'm not even allowed to have two queen beds in a room. Oh, because it could be four people. Because that could be four people. So that right there, I mean, and if you're, you should know these codes along with a lot of other ones when it comes to Airbnb because each city, not even county, each city has their own rules and regulations when it comes to Airbnb because they were losing out on so much hospitality money and blah, blah, blah. So a lot of cities have put different restrictions in place. One property that I took over managing, they had 12 pillows, 12 sleep positions. They had six queen bed, the Three, three bunk beds, each with their own queen bed. Oh, wow. So it could sleep 12 in this bunk room. I, I, fi I finally removed it. Yep. Because, and, and we have two queen beds in there now, which that's the maximum I'll do. Yep. The reason for that is, one, I don't want a party room. You've got to, you've got to understand, you know, if you're doing that, what kind of client are you attracting? Majority of the people I know when they travel, they don't want to, they don't want to share a room with somebody else. Well, and that that boils down to whenever you're deciding on Airbnb is realize who your audience is. What, who are you building this out for? Like even with the design factor, uh, is is this going to be a business traveler? Is this going to be you know a fun vacation house? Is it relaxing? Is it this? Any of those things, and then you're narrowing down what your clientele is going to be. And if your clientele is family, vacation, fun, 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 then okay with a bunk room as long as it meets code. But if that's not what you're going for, then yeah, you don't want a party house. Right. So. And, and I'm going to go on the record and say you don't want a party house, period. There, oh, there's the, a lot the, of people out there that do just party houses. I, so I know. But the, I the agree. Drama, I wouldn't want that. The drama that comes with it is not worth it. Yeah. Um, it's hard on your house. It's hard on your investment. Yeah. So I don't go that way. I don't, I don't do the let's cram as many people into this house as possible. Yeah. Because what I find is, you know, if you have 30 people who have shared in renting a house, they're going to do bad things to that house. It just, it's just inevitable. Well, and it depends on the age range and where that place is right. located and all that business. But we're talking about design, so we're going to get back to the design factor. Right. Um, so the color of the art and the throw pillows and the objects. Right, which is next. Yeah. Which, which, so that's... It's I the big stuff first. It's the big stuff first. And once the big stuff is set, then I go and go, all right, where should the art go and how big does it need to be? I try to get as big as art as I possibly can. And, you know, I will fill up the space. I love the pieces now that you can buy because you can now order art where, oh, I like that painting. But, gosh, it's just so small. Well, you can buy it in, like, three separate pieces and spread it out. That, that so makes it a lot. So now it's... I've taken care of a wall instead of I started with this piece and now I got to find 15 other things to go exactly well, with it. Especially for modern, modern floor plans that are these big open floor plans. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to fill a wall space for that. Yeah. What? 
how are you filling it? What are you doing there? Exactly. And I think whenever you realize, all right, what, what your colors are going to be and, and then what your artwork is, then it's easier to like keep that train of thought. I'm going shopping or I'm online and nope, that doesn't, it doesn't fall right. in, the, in this box. It doesn't fall in this box. So in my bedrooms, I always have white, um, thin quilt coverlets, coverlets. over mm -hmm. it, right? So I'll have my sheets and whatever size bed they are. Then I'll have the white. That's all very neutral. Mm -hmm. Usually I'll have some big decorative headboard, neutral color, mm -hmm. something all very neutral. Living room, gray couch, brown couch, tan couch, whatever, neutral. So I come into that neutral base, then I pick the art that I like. And from that, I pick that main color that's in that art. Mm -hmm. And then I add throw pillows and curtains and knickknacks. And by knickknacks, it could be like a little sculpture or something I love doing is going to the half price books. This is another tip of the day, Ryan. And, yeah. and Magical music over. Okay. So when you go to half price books, you go, I go to the old book section mm -hmm. and I don't care what it's on. It could be on, you know, the, the good man's guide to lawn keeping or whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. But I look for the colors that are in my art pieces. And they're usually about five bucks a piece and I'll just get a stack of them, Yeah. right? And they'll all kind of work together and some of them will be like dark brown or black, but then I'll have like one or two that kind of pop that color mm -hmm. that's from it. And then I just kind of put them on the shelf. Which, you know, granted, it's, it, that's kind of a twofer. You're getting the uh, decorative accent, but you, they may be books somebody wants to read. Maybe somebody wants to relax. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, nine times out of ten, I don't want to read those books, but let's be honest, it's me. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so uh, that's the way that you start getting that decorative thing. What do you think... Like one of the one of the clips that we saw in a previous show was just a backyard with a couple of trash cans. <laughs> Do you think that um, people tend to forget their outside spaces? They absolutely do, and it is by far, in my opinion, more important than even the interior. I mean, I agree because if I'm going there, I mean, if it's just me, then there, then that's uh, I'm I'm wanting something different. But if it's my family and we're traveling. That outside space, I want it to be, I want to relax, I want to enjoy, I want to have fun. I, I can I can attest that with, with Jay Lee because <laughs> so that, that Utah trip I was referring to the, uh, yeah. earlier, um, we're like, uh, they were like, where do you want to, I was like, I don't care. Casey's like, I don't care. Jay Lee spent like a year finding a location <laughs> I just to it. make sure it had a I wanted a hot, a hot tub. tub. <laughs> I was but like a deck in a hot tub. She, I would be. I she would literally be. sent us all these like. This there was one, a group this one, chat. or this one. Yeah. There's a group chat. This one, this one, this one, this one, and all of us were like, we don't care. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was like, like, this one okay. is a hot tub. I was like, all right, it's for it's that, my choice. I got to tell you, yeah, the outdoor space is so important. Now I have gone more towards instead of so I love hot tubs. Mm -hmm. I've I've owned one. I don't know for like twenty. I don't know, 25 years, we'll say. I do love them. The upkeep on like a general above ground hot tub mm -hmm. is almost not worth it. It's, well, it's I mean, so I do much. get that as a, I'm just saying in general, as far as having an outdoor space, you want to pay attention to that outdoor space. What is going to attract them? The hot tub at that one, I mean, we're in Salt Lake City, Utah. These are being used for ski, right. you know. right. And so, it, so hot tub in those type of what areas I, is what almost I, what crucial. What I love are gas fire pits. In, yeah. in this same thing where, you know, I talk to my clients about spending the money. Mm -hmm. We run a gas line. We run a gas line from the house through the yard to where this fire pit is going to be. The cost is usually like 250 300 bucks. Yep. Depending on how, long, how far that gas line's got to go. Yep. Right? The money that recoups from that, because people love this type of stuff. Yeah. You know, when you see it. So that is one trend that you'll see at 
a lot of my properties. Well, and are, I think are those, something are that fire pits. we have started to see more and more often, which everybody wants their Instagram photo or their Facebook photo. So what is photo worthy about that exterior uh -huh. portion of your Airbnb and even the interior because you want to be able to imagine somebody is saying, I'm relaxing, I've got my glass of wine and I am relaxing here and this is what it looks like because everybody wants and, those you moments. Know, and, and that's, you know, that's a fun thing, especially if you've got a place that's got a really cool backdrop with, a, you know, a cool feature like that. And I don't care what it is. Yep. It could be a fire pit. It could be a pool. It could be a hot tub. Yep. It, it could be a, a little game area. Absolutely. Or the a outdoor sitting area. It just this charming and, you know, it's, oh my gosh, look at where I'm at. You yeah. know, look at what I'm doing. Just being able to take that photo and being proud of where you're staying. And that you got to keep that in mind whenever you're decorating these spaces or putting money back into these spaces for the Airbnb. Right. Um, but that being said, you also got to keep it minimal. Yeah. It, One, you don't want people walking off with your stuff. It, so you, a lot of stuff you, to dust and keep up with. And like, if it's a bunch of clutter. No. And clutter makes it look dirty. So make sure, like I keep all small appliances in a pantry or a closet or a cabinet, you're not gonna see that out on the yep. counter. You wanna keep as many things as minimal as possible. Which also means um, no personal photos. I, I feel People like that should- love this. They're yeah. like, oh, they wanna stay at my place. No, they don't. They don't want to imagine anybody else ever being there except for them. And, and people do this in their listing as well. Yes. Where you'll see like photos of people who have been, you know, having a rip roaring party there and you're like, that does not encourage anybody to rent this. Yep. Because you want to imagine that you're the only people that have ever sat on that potty. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wasn't going there, but um, um, but that also goes along with anything religious or cultural. Yeah, and and you know I know that's a it's a delicate subject with people, but you want to keep it minimal. You're not trying to you're trying to invite no. people. You know, not offend anybody or not put anybody off. It's, you know, if I came to drink a whole bunch of wine with my girlfriends or something, and it was super religious in there, I'm gonna feel a little uncomfortable. You know, right. I mean, it, I'm not going to relax like I would. If you have Bible verses everywhere, yeah, there, then I'm going to feel a little uncomfortable. Now, if I'm there with my grandmother and we're hanging out, that's a whole diff different story. But still, it's right. just best not to even make that uh, make that a thing. It is the number one rule in real estate. When you are renovating and rehabbing for for investment, you do it to the majority of the people. Yep. So cultural and you know you could go any way you want with this um i'm going to throw religion kind of into that as well yeah you don't want crosses on the wall you don't want biblical verses yep you don't want anything that you know you can have that in your house and and to take this a different way than everybody was expecting don't hang a stars and bars flag up in the living room then there's I that i don't care how much you agree with it this is not What's attractive. The stars and bars flag? It's the Confederate flag. The rebel. Oh, okay. Yeah. The rebel well, flag. Yeah, I'm I'm down with not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you were. But again, while everybody you personally hang out with might be really up I, with having the rebel flag up, the Confederate flag, it's not appropriate for like ninety percent of people who might be coming there to rent. And it would make people feel uncomfortable. I think it goes so back, don't do it. It also goes back to location, location, location. So yeah. like if if you have like a Joel Olstein church and your Airbnb is right across the street, then maybe the Bible maybe. verses are appropriate. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I thought you, you were gonna say that maybe the stars and bars are appropriate. No, the stars and bars are never appropriate. No, no. <laughs> actually, I, 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 would, I would even uh, push back on that too. Cause what if you, have an Airbnb across the street from Vicksburg or Gettysburg. I got it. And you're doing a Civil War theme. You know and, and one, you know, half the house is the North and half the house is the South. I, I agree. Anyway, I, those I, are themes. But I agree yeah. with you. For 98% of the time. Yeah, 99%. Absolutely yeah. eggshell white. Even, very even across the street from Joel Olstein's church, I would say if you really need your dose of the Bible, look out the front window and look at Joel Olstein's church. You don't want it 
inside the house. But yeah. the Confederate flag's okay in front of even <laughs> no. the Confederate flag, especially. But the if Confederate you're flag. so basically, it comes down to sit here, plan. Yep. You know, uh, come up with the idea of what your theme, what you want your theme to be. But if it's not your strength, hire somebody. I, and and let's really just get there. Yeah. If it's not your strength. Hire a freaking professional. Yeah. Or it, maybe you have a friend who you love everything they do. Right. Talk to them. You know, if this isn't your bag, then, you know, reach out. But yeah, hire a professional. When in doubt, hire a professional. Always. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and again, I will, I, I tell people this all the time. I am not a professional. If your wife thinks she can do better, absolutely do better. All right, so here's some examples. These are all mine. Um, so like you said, here's the neutral um, on the two accent chairs, the gray accent chairs. Right. You've got the neutral uh, gray, and then you did uh, the painting in the back, or the, the artwork in the back that has the red telephone booths. Uh, right. The London, is this the British? Yeah, so yeah. this one I did after everything British on it. And then the two on the right are that one was from one that was Paris. Um, you're selling the London one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Which I, so the, the art I love. Yeah. The, the art is phenomenal in that, and those aren't those are those those uh, paintings aren't cheap. But again, it was look at all the walls; they're all gray. All of the floors, you know. Yep. They're the hardscape is the neutral, and then the bigger items are neutral, but then you can have the pop of color with either your accent pillows, your artwork, or your accent chairs. Well, and I could have easily, on the left, I could have easily done some random modern blue scape mm -hmm. painting, and then those pillows could have been blue. Absolutely. Or maybe the chairs were all blue. Again, if you have everything as a neutral backdrop, to start, then you can just add in your color enhancements. Yeah, that's when you add the layers. Depending on what art you like. Okay, so this kind of gets into like the little accents that we're looking at. So on the left, the first picture is, that's a patio, you know, and don't forget to accent the accent patio. Accent and decorate your outside. So this is covered under, this is covered under an awning, and so we have a we have a couch outside, we've got some pillows, and then, you know, we even have this little fake plant. And yeah, your little and tray, yeah. And then your art book on your coffee table. Right. The art books, I guarantee you every single time, every Airbnb that I stay at, I will always pick up, pick up an art book. I look at always. every single one. If I see it and it's like some photos of the city I'm in, I am all excited to see it. And then I'm even excited to like go down and find the places. Oh, I want to see this. I want to get my picture yes, in front absolutely. of this that I saw in the books. So I almost always try and have something like that on the table. And then this, and then this one at the right. Um, it's a little hard to see it, but it very off at the very bottom right. I can see the blue. Do you see in the fireplace? Weird, well, yeah, the blue in the fireplace. But just below it is this was this awful chair. So when I inherited this thing, I didn't have any of those royal blue accents or that blue rock in the fireplace. Mm -hmm. I just had these empty shelves, um, these beige couches, and then this ugly chair that had some other blue into it. And what I ended up doing was throwing on these bright blue pillows and blue lamps, and I put those blue pillows on that, on that same little ugly chair, and it just kind of tied Everything came together. Everything came together on it. Well, and that's the lovely, I mean, that's really is the lovely thing about accents is you can kind of, once you start bringing that theme together, then things don't look as ho a hodgepodge. Right. All right. So what I love about this photo, um, I couldn't find, so on the left, you'll see that these three pictures are above there. That was a huge wall space. That is a huge wall and space. And I didn't have a lot of money for it. Those are all three of the same photo. Those are the same painting. I purchased them at, at home. I think I paid maybe $80 a piece for them. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get the entire wall basically covered. And all I did was flip one upside down in the middle. Yeah, just to make it, just to and, give it a different and flow. And the rug also bought at at home, but, but completely by another company 
but it just kind of looks like it fits together. Well, and again, you have like the accent piece in there, the, the I say accent piece, but it's shuffleboard, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's you awesome. You had a big room, again, what do you do with this room? Yeah, you adding know? features, adding game fe features and, whenever and you're decorating. That shuffleboard was brand new, brand new from Amazon, $800. Can you get a pool table? Yes, but if you're gonna get an actual really nice pool table, once you're all said and done, you're still probably $1,200 into it. Mm -hmm. Even if you buy it off Facebook Marketplace, you get it moved, you get it refelted, all of that. Well, still, you're talking about a, um, shuffleboard, uh, a shuffleboard table that fits more spaces. It still gives you a game, oh. but it fits more spaces. It absolutely does, and in yep. this, Really, we just had this huge open space in the middle, which I ended up throwing a rug down on. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, we had the table and chairs at the end. It all worked, um, but no, it was a huge space. Could we have put a pool table there? Probably. But, but that for, works fine. But for the cost, that worked yeah. fine. Yeah. All right, so this is the other side of the room. The art was ordered from Amazon, that mm -hmm. art on the wall. And again, I had all of these different throw pillows um, before, and then the art came, and I thought it would be more of a royal blue, and it turns out it was turquoise. So I had to then go back and rebuy all of Exchange. my Exchange, <laughs> yeah. We gotta make this work, people. So and sometimes it is. It's just kind of that ebb and flow. Right, it, you know, and everything on the shelf, um, stuff like that is bought from TJ Maxx, Ross Stress for Less, Burlington Coat yeah, Factory. absolutely. I mean, they've got neat the pieces you can just store. grab and accent with and still fill up. Yeah, I mean, you're not trying to fill it to the brim, but you are trying to make sure there's pops of color there. And don't forget your, outso uh, your outside places, your outdoor places. So here's an example of a fire pit I did um, where you know, we run the gas lane underneath the ground yep. up to that. But again, if you've got a big wall like on the garage, you know, that's purchased, those three pieces purchased it at home. Mm -hmm. They're just metal wall art. And you yeah, get those stick out them there. up there. Cafe lights are a super inexpensive way to. And I love cafe, it changes the whole ambiance of the out, an outdoor space. It does. So don't forget that. And I love that the table was set, mm -hmm. especially for your pictures whenever you're listing on Airbnb. Make sure, make it look inviting, like you're having a dinner party. And, you know, and, and are all of those items there? A good, a good portion of them I leave at the house for yep. the guests to be able to like set up and do their own. All of those dishes are the dishes that are, are there. They, all they have to do is get out and they can set up a nice dinner party they can yeah they can do whatever but again yeah make sure that you're you've got those little accent touches and all of it so people could imagine having a dinner party there yeah that's fantastic do yeah. we have any more is that no, the last it. one awesome well thank you for sharing all of your lovely pictures um decorating I think is hard great tips decorating is hard and i gotta tell you decorating stresses me out well, I know it stresses out a lot of people, but hopefully y'all will take some of these tips and get out there and do it yourself or hire a professional. Just hire a professional, <laughs> which they can be expensive. They can be, but there are some people out there. Stagers sometimes help as well. If you just hire somebody who does staging, they can help you, that sort of thing. That's a little bit of a tip um, for people who are in, the, in this industry. You know, especially too, if you just start with your basics. As I said, anybody can go out and buy neutral color sofas and, you know, beds. And then you just layer on top of that. And then you layer on top of that with, you know. Yep. Well, thanks for joining the Real Estate Divas. I hope this helped. Be sure to comment and sub uh, subscribe. And I'm Jay Lee Thompson with Texel Real Estate and Real Estate Reformation. And I'm Kristen Kurtz with Capricorn Mortgage Investments. Thanks for joining us, you guys. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.